In today's video we will reveal how Paul Gartner performed an astonishing trick involving dice on stage for Penn and Teller. Let's do a quick rewind of what happened in the performance. Paul started off the performance by placing three dice on the table, a hat, and a magic wand. He placed the dice on one side of the table and the hat on the other side. He picked up the first die, placed it in his left hand, and it vanished immediately and appeared magically under the hat. He then picked up the second die placed it in his left hand and asked Penn to tell whether it's in his left hand or not, Penn said that it was still in his left hand, and upon opening his hand, he showed that he had not disappeared it yet. Paul said that he will have to tap it twice to vanish it, upon opening his hand, it immediately vanished and appeared under the hat. For the third die, Paul showed how he was vanishing the die and making it appear under the hat. He said that after tapping the wand, he actually quickly took the die from his left hand, caught it with his right hand, and while picking up the hat, he placed it underneath it. He then took all the three dice from underneath the hat and said that he was going to do it one more time. He placed two of the die in his left hand and one in his pocket. Upon tapping his left hand with a wand, a third die magically appeared under it. He did it a second time and asked Teller to watch closely, while he placed two die in his left hand and one in his pocket. And once again magically made a third die appear in his left hand while placing it on the table. He said he will do it one last time and place the two die in his left hand and the third die in his right pocket. Upon tapping his hand, the two dies had magically disappeared from his left hand. He then asked Penn to tell where the two dice had vanished to, Penn said under the hat. Paul said that the two dice had not only appeared under the hat, but also combined to form one big die, and upon lifting up the cap a relatively larger die appeared. He then pulled out the small die from his pocket and said that we know where these two dice come from. But where did this incredibly large die come from? He then lifted up the cap once more and another even larger die magically appeared. He then picked up the cap and out of nowhere a bunch of dice appeared leaving Penn and Teller completely astonished. Spoiler alert! If you accidentally clicked on this video and don't want to know how such tricks work, I will give you 5 seconds to click off this video, but if you consider magic as a puzzle then stay tuned. Now before I get down to the reveal, I want to give a quick shout out to my wonderful patrons for supporting my work. Their support is a reason I am able to improve my content and upload more regularly. We will break the trick into two phases. In the first phase, we will discuss the observations and in the second phase based on those observations, we will learn exactly how Paul Gartner performed this incredible dice illusion. The first thing I want you to take note of is right here at this moment. You can spot him holding something in his right hand with his fingers curled over here. The second thing you'll notice is Paul Gartner doing a false transfer from his right hand to his left hand, to apparently make the first die disappear. You can clearly see that in order to execute the false transfer, he slides the die down his fingers and holds it in his curled fingers and then immediately goes to grab the wand to redirect the attention to his closed left fist. While doing the second vanish he once again repeats the false transfer from his right to his left hand. The fourth thing I want you to take note of is a clever move that Paul does while lifting up the cap to show that three dies, during his motion of apparently pushing the third die underneath the cap, and then picking up the cap, in reality, he never threw the die underneath the cap rather is holding on to the die in his curled fingers of his right hand. Right here at this moment you will find Paul putting the cap behind the table for an instant to do something fishy. Finally, let's see what Penn had to say about Paul's performance that will help us in figuring out how exactly he performed the illusion. It reminded us of when we were on David Letterman's program. And on David Letterman's program, we had a top hat. You can see Penn here, is referring to Penn and Teller's performance on David Letterman's show. In which Teller produced a bunch of cockroaches upon lifting up the top hat. I'm surprised, would you please? Oh! I like to point out that these, uh... Oh, come on now, these animals are not being hurt in any way. Oh! Oh! In his code words he literally described a method that he used to produce the cockroaches from the top hat but only left out one small detail. And then opened it up and ha or pulled it off and had like, um, hundreds, hundreds of cockroaches. We will discuss that one small detail in the explanation. Let's see what else Penn had to say about Paul's performance. One big finish, or two big finishes, or rarely three, but you did like all nested one in the other. The code words that Penn mentioned is pretty obvious when he used the word nested. For those who have not figured out what Penn means by the word nested, we'll get to that in the explanation. Stay tuned, we'll be right back.
If you have made it this far into the video, be sure to hit the like button it really supports the channel. Also be sure to subscribe, I would really appreciate it due to the time and effort I put into my videos. If you want to see more and more uploads, please support me on Patreon for a single dollar per month. I would really appreciate it wholeheartedly. Now let's get back to figuring out how this trick is done. Paul initially started off the performance with a cap, three dice on the table and a fourth die hidden in his curled right hand fingers. He placed that hidden die underneath the cap while flipping it over on the table. While apparently picking up the first die with his right hand, and dropping it into his left hand, he faked the motion of dropping the die and was actually holding on to it in the curled fingers of his right hand. He then picked up the cap, to reveal the die that he had already placed before the trick started. He placed the second die, that he was hiding in his curled fingers of his right hand underneath the cap while flipping it over. So, there were two dice underneath the cap. For the second die teleportation, he repeated the same method that he used for the first die teleportation underneath the cap. For the third die, while he was explaining how he placed the die underneath the cap, he never threw the third die underneath the cap, rather held onto it in his curled right hand fingers, and the moment he picked up the cap to reveal the three die on the table, he placed a large die underneath the cap behind the table and held it hidden with his left hand underneath. At this point, a large die is underneath the cap, three dice are on the table and, one die is hidden in the finger palm of his right hand. He picked up the two dice on the table. He dropped the die he was hiding in his right hand while placing the second die in his left hand, so he was holding on to three dice in his closed left hand fist, while apparently picking up the third die off the table. He actually held on to it in his curled right hand fingers and never dropped it into his pocket. He repeated the same procedure the second time he showed this trick. But during the third time of presenting this trick, he did not drop the two dice into his left hand, rather held on to them in his right hand curled fingers and placed the two dice into his right pocket along with the third die he picked from the table. So now, all three dice are in his right pocket and he is holding nothing in both of his hands. Upon picking up the cap and revealing the large die he placed inside earlier, he moved the cap towards himself, sliding it across the table and loaded two dies that were nested into each other. To help you understand what a nested die is, you can see in the animation that there are two dice. One of which has a bottom missing. So, this larger die encloses the relatively smaller die. He had placed this specially designed larger dice underneath the cap. Upon picking up the cap and revealing the larger die, he held onto the cap tightly to let go of this enclosed die, and to reveal the largest die he simply removed the cap. Right before he ended the performance you can see him moving the cap behind the table towards himself one last time. At this moment Paul placed a large black plastic cup containing regular sized dice inside the cap and dumped out the cup containing the dice onto the table. You can spot the black plastic cup right at this moment on a close-up view. He then dropped the plastic cup behind the table and flipped over the cap onto the table. Finally, when Penn and Teller were leaving, Paul did a switch with the largest gimmick die that had a bottom side missing, by switching it with another equally large die, that was not a gimmick. So in case Penn and Teller wanted to examine the die later on, they could. If you like what you saw, be sure to hit the like button and feel free to comment which reveal you want to see next. Thanks for watching and as always, have a great day.